Welcome to the In Shape Fitness Show. I am Coach Kim, and today's podcast is obviously going to be about in-home exercise and exercise in general during this unprecedented public health disaster that we're dealing with in the United States and how it is affecting all of us. Obviously, as we start to figure out how, you know, adjust to the the reality that we're living in, and I'm speaking specifically, of course, about people that are not sick. If there is uh, someone in your life you're taking care of who has contracted uh, COVID-19 or you yourself have uh, or or you're um, at a high risk because of pre, uh, pre-existing conditions, that is, is completely separate. But, you know, the majority of Americans, the majority of, uh, of people that are, are thinking about health and fitness in some sort of, you know, new way, new normal way, the idea of, of trying to stay fit is it's not something you you're forgetting about or maybe necessarily thinking a lot about but it is something that is important to to consider in terms of the way that we um you know that maybe the, some lessons that we learned from this experience and the way that we typically take care of our bodies um, relative to what may be possible in this period of time or, or what's what's really limiting about this period of time, right, which is that you cannot go to your gym, you cannot go to your spin cycle class, you cannot go to your boxing class, you cannot go to a, you know, a boot camp class. Y- your house, whatever you have in your house is it. I, I was watching one of my, my morning routines, and this actually predates the COVID-19 madness, but one of my morning routines is to catch the funny news in the morning, which is what my, my daughter uh, calls like, um, you know, Seth Meyers and Jimmy Kimmel and those kind of people. Hmm. Actually, I think it might have been Trevor Noah that was talking about this guy who is uh, is quarantined and he lives, you know, I'm in New York City where this is all urban environment and this guy lives in um, some place where he has a bunch of land. So he goes out and invents a gym by cutting down trees and then building like the bench from like, you know, um, weight-bearing uh, push-up benches. And uh, and invents the the dumbbells and his barbells and has like a pull up bar and he basically lumberjacks his him way his way into the creation of a gym facility. Obviously, that's not happening happening at all if you're living in New York City or any other urban environment. And chances are you're not doing it even if you live in a forest or live near um, you know some wooded area where you have access to trees to chop down. Not that you would. Not that you should. Um, but hey, you know, in all seriousness, uh, I just thought it was the funniest thing. Cause he like literally this guy is pushing up a, um, a barbell and, uh, and it is, you know, it has two huge logs attached to a, um, a thinner log. Um, I have no idea what it would weigh, but honestly, um, I just found it to be hilarious and, um, and rather, I don't know, sort of a little over the top for what we're dealing with, especially considering for the last, I don't know, 10 years, I've been talking about how the um, the functional physique that you really need, the functional physique that really makes a difference in terms of preventing illnesses, preventing, you know, having, boosting your immunity, or not necessarily boosting your immunity, but protecting your immunity and um, ensuring that you can live a quality of life that is is what you want right what is what is it that you want to do obviously right now what we all really want to do is get the heck out of our houses uh, out of our homes and be able to enjoy life a little bit but in terms of the physical things that you want to be able to do think about those things and for a lot of our population these are really simple things right to be able to um, to be able to pick up your kids and play with your kids if they're little or or maybe grandkids, to be able to reach for stuff in your kitchen and not feel like you, you're going to pull your back or to reach down and pick something up off the floor without taking a huge risk, to not fall down. That's a big one. To be able to negotiate stairs well. Those are really good reasons to... Do stuff with your body physically in order to 
to maintain, to protect yourself, to prevent issues that would decrease your quality of, of life. And let me tell you, you know, if we don't wake up after this kind of disaster and start thinking about the reality, because we know, right, people with no one deserves to, to, to be infected with COVID-19, but we do know that a disproportionate number of, of, uh, of cases are people that have pre-existing conditions. And the pre-existing conditions, for the most part, are conditions that could be prevented. They're heart disease, diabetes, and not, not genetic type 1 diabetes. They're heart disease and type 2 diabetes mostly asthma, which is not necessarily anyone's fault. I live in, you know, a place in in upper Manhattan where um, just across the river in the South Bronx is one of the most polluted areas of the East Coast. And in our school system, there are some schools where 40% of the kids have asthma. And so these pre-existing conditions, for the most part, especially if you're an adult and you can exercise, you have the, the ability to do stuff that helps keep you healthy, preventative physical movement is is um is a huge would be a huge leap forward for us a big paradigm shift for our population that could be a silver lining in 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 um the 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 tragedy that is unfolding right now in many of our communities and it is a true tragedy i um won't even go into the specifics in terms of what's happening in new york city but we do need to figure out how to move still. We can't just sit and uh, sit at the TV, sit watch TV and, and sit at our desks and, and Zoom with our friends all day long. Um, you know, we were even doing things that are, are, you know, maybe more sort of intellectually stimulating, like reading books and, and researching and writing and stuff like that. But, you know, physically speaking, there is – uh, you know, it, it's not good, especially given the fact that we've reached a period of time in our consumer lives where we spend a lot of time eating. So, you know, what are the foods that ran out? Obviously, toilet paper ran out fastest when this uh, when the, the quarantine periods started happening. Um, but the foods that were running out were sodas and and snack junk foods, the, you know, potato chips and Doritos and and juice boxes and, um, you know, candy stuff that we shouldn't be eating at all right now, ever, seriously. We shouldn't be eating that stuff right now. And, it's a, you know, I mean, there's a place maybe later to consume fun things. And learning how to bake is maybe is something actually we're doing in my house. My daughter, um, you know, is um, is old enough to want to wanna, understand how to make cupcakes and cookies and stuff like that. Those are fine things to do every once in a while, but we really do need to stop buying all the crap that we buy in the grocery store. And, and, and but so, but back to my point, if your sedentary existence is, um, you know, is coupled with the, the food profile of many Americans, it's a recipe for preventative health disasters. And we're just trying to get over an acute health actual disaster so let we don't want to add more to that later let's start talking about the things that we can do to uh to the 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 steps that we can take in our homes that would help us um learn something from this this period of time and i don't think hardcore workouts is the way to go either right you know if you've been listening to me over the years and you know me i I am hardcore with some things i do i I do run marathons although i haven't run a full marathon as not as a coach in in several years i have many many half marathons under my belt seven actual marathons and and countless other races and i run a lot and i love the act of of moving i do not like to sit still i am going completely crazy my demeanor may actually even seem a little more animate, animated right now because I really am going nuts being sort of secluded and um, stuck in my house. But be that as it may, we have to come up with a plan for taking care of the body with maybe with for the time being, and then we do this even more later, taking care of the body with without all of the accoutrements of the gym business, the sort of consumer exercise business. Now, sometimes a resistance band or a medicine ball or some dumbbells or whatever 
are a nice way to mix things up. You know, playing some tennis, um, throwing and catching balls, um, uh, ping pong, you know, even, or um, golf uh, isn't really great. But um, trying to think of some other recreational activities that are fun, kicking a soccer ball around, doing things outside with your kids, your family, your friends, whatever. Those are really, really great ways to spend time and to be active and to, you know, have a life, an enjoyable life that includes fitness in the mix. But the dedicated business of going into a gym, hopefully, hopefully, I'm smiling from ear to ear here. You know, I don't want businesses to fail, but I kind of do want some businesses to fail. We don't really need to go back to that culture. We really just don't. We spend so many billions of dollars. I don't have the figure up because I don't really, it doesn't really matter right now because it, it, the economy is so screwed up. You know, the worth of the companies right now is very different, but so much money that we don't need to spend on these giant facilities that are shipping in heavy equipment from China, right? The environmental impact of of all this heavy stuff that we, we buy, you know, which is manufactured across across the oceans um, and, and we're ruining our, our ocean life as a result of all the, the ocean transit, you know, Atlantic and Pacific shipping. We, um, we you know, use ex- all this electricity in our treadmill use and the other equipment that you plug into the wall. It's a 30-minute jog on a treadmill can burn enough energy to power 17 light bulbs. That is a fact. That's a statistic that is really important to think about when – all is said and done, the smoke starts to clear. Do we really want to continue down that road? And hopefully the answer will be will be no. But what we can do, and I have been doing this on the other channel for InShape, which is called AM Muscle Maintenance, where we pick a few exercises. Part of it is the educational piece. It's knowing what to do and knowing how to do the moves. Because obviously everyone's not going to get out and start running races. Everyone's not going to go, you know, doesn't have access to be able to go on, on long hikes or um, long bicycle rides or whatever. But there are things that you can do. There are ways to, there, there are prescriptive ways and, and um, functional priorities to learn about and practice and then be able to, uh, to work into your life with regularity so that you can be freed of all the shackles of the consumer exercise business and begin to take better care of yourself on the other side. Um, so, so that is um, is one thing. Now, what we do right now is is another issue, right? Like, actually, what we do to stay sane is something else that we've been talking about um, and the various sort of um, pressure points of my life, right? Where I I um, I only have a few clients that I'm seeing through through Zoom, which I, I do do, um, to exercise with clients individually uh, through um, through the internet. And, um, and then I work with runners who, even though most of our, all of races are canceled, there are people still running if it's safe and you can maintain six feet of physical distance from everybody else around you, which I insist you do, right? You don't want to go, if you're in New York, you don't want to find yourself in Central Park on a pathway where, you know, you're like three across on this this tiny little, you know, pathway. You need to have the space, period. And that is because when you're exercising, your, you know, kind of um, um, like physical profile emanates from your body, right? If you're sweating and you're breathing heavy, you're, you, if you are asymptomatic, but still you might have COVID-19 in your body, you are putting other people at risk. And that is no, that is not good. It's not, not at all a smart thing to do. So you've got to have six feet of distance, um, um, between yourself and anyone else. Um, but if you are, um, but, but people are doing that, right? So, so people around the country actually uh, interact with our, our Roadrunners Club running interface. And 
the beauty of running in many ways is that it's a solitary activity. So being able to, for me also, be just being able to go out and do a little bit of movement, albeit my runs have been shorter, my runs have been um, not at all hard, um, you know, not at all like really intensive and super long, but they, I do run and I run multiple times a week as much as I have before because if I didn't, I would truly go mad. I mean, I really, I rely on the physical activity to keep myself in check, to make sure that I'm taking good care of myself. And when my body is in, is, is feeling good, then I feel good as a person and I'm a better mother and I'm a better uh, wife. And, you know, I cook better meals and enjoy myself a lot better as a result of that. So being able to to do some things um to be able to to get your heart rate up a little bit right that this is a respiratory disease that we're dealing with the covid-19 disease what it does and the reason that it's so pernicious has to do with the fact that it has this incredibly sophisticated way being that it's only one cell a virus or you know a single cell organism it is incredibly efficient and and single-minded not that it has a mind because it doesn't but it goes right into your body most of the time through your nose or through your throat obviously through your um your um your airways and then settles into the deepest part of of lung tissue where it nestles in cozies on up to you know to a cell right let's just say because I know it, 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 depending on your health profile, it depends on like sort of the, the, um, the invader, like, you know, a proportion that, that requires, is required for you to experience symptoms and actually develop the, the disease itself. Lots of things get into your respiratory system. Um, especially if you live in an urban environment, you're breathing in, you know, different, uh, vapors, uh, food vapors and, and, um, bacteria and viruses and dust and so on and so forth all the time we don't know it but we are this is just the way the world works and you're like if you're a total clean freak you know um about about these kinds of things um it's it's a little bit probably a little bit tricky to deal with mentally but it is it is the way the world works so it nestles in and um once it sort of takes over a cell it convinces your lung your lung cell to produce replications of replicants of of the virus it it basically um you know turns it it uh um, morphs into this machine, morphs your your lung cell into a machine that replicates the virus for for it, and um, and that's how it spreads inside the body. And since it's in your lungs, it specifically uh, attaches to the lung cells. It then um, that's why that dry cough is is such an important component of the um, the symptoms that are um, evaluated, and uh, and that's why the um, the ability to get your heart rate up, to be able to be comfortable in an elevated heart rate um, condition is continues to be an important thing that you can do. So what are the most important things that you could do that will help um, move your body around and also um, get your heart rate up a little bit and make you feel better? And, and that's one of the reasons why, by the way, I, that I mentioned the AM Muscle Maintenance, the other podcasts that I do, I do them every day of the week. And, and this one I only do um, periodically once a week I try. And so you could do short routines in your home. Getting your heart rate up doesn't have to be for like a heart rate elevated workout for a half an hour or an hour. You don't have to do that. You can do little segments of time. One flight of stairs is probably not going to do it for you, but if you go two, three flights of stairs at a time, you probably will feel your heart rate go up. Um, you can um, get onto the floor, and we did some push-ups in the other workout that I did uh, this week. We're doing push-ups. Push-ups are, are an elevated heart rate workout. They're hard on the body because it's a moving plank and because your shoulders, your upper body is probably not very strong unless you are, you know, more athletically inclined and or work out fairly frequently. So, but push-ups are really aerobic. Um, likewise, if you stay in the push-up start position and move your lower body, um, we call those mountain climbers, but they don't have to be super crazy and heavy duty. You can walk. We call those mountain hikers. And you can move your legs forward and back individually slowly in the plank position as long as your 
butt is down and you're horizontal, your body is is kind of levitating above the floor and you're in that position and it doesn't hurt your wrists, you can move in that position for, say, 60 to 90 seconds at a time, take rests in between, and elevate your heart rate over a period of time. That's an excellent way to get your heart rate up. Um, And if your wrists are, are not strong enough, you could even do that on your elbows, right? It's still hard. Not quite as hard, but it's still difficult. All right, what are some other things that you can do? Really basic high school stuff like calisthenics, like jumping jacks. Obviously, you can you can go outside and go for a walk, um, and uh, and make it you know a, a fast paced walk in order to get your heart rate up, or an elevated like a um, you know um, a terrain kind of um, uh, walk in order to uh, you know like a hike uh, uphill kind of thing if you wanted to get your heart rate up. Uh, there is another exercise that you can do on in within the space of a yoga mat that's really easy in terms of getting your heart rate up it requires that you have a decently strong back but it's called an inchworm and it's kind of like a burpee but i like the idea instead of with the burpees again i don't really like the intensity part that most people think of when they think of burpees so jumping forward and jumping back all that real high intensity work is really not necessary for what we're trying to do here which is to maintain physical health and promote uh, general immunity and internal health along the way right but but an inchworm is where you bend your knees and put your hands on the floor and then walk out to the push-up position the push-up starting position and then walk your feet in to the squatted position again and then stand all the way up turn around 180 degrees and then continue um, continue doing that right so those are some pretty good ideas of ways that you can uh, you know and you can do some of this stuff while you're watching you know a television program or a movie or something if you want um, or the the news if you're if you're a glutton for um, the agony of of the reality we're living in uh, which I am and and I feel sometimes sad about that but I'm trying my best to entertain my daughter. Uh, and uh, and therefore, I'm also watching a lot of animal shows. So there's that. Um, in any case, I'll end with um, with these thoughts about uh, about the you know back to the beginning here, where hopefully there's a silver silver lining as we we uh, hit the peak, have flattened the curve, whatever you know, sort of um, uh, saying that you would like to to use to put us through the point or get us to the doorway where it feels like there's going to be an end. And the end in, in reality isn't really the end, right? The end for the, the acute, you know, kind of change in our life isn't really the end because we, we know from the scientific experts that we still need a vaccine and we need antibody testing if we really want to send people back into um, office spaces um, you know, onto trading floors, into grocery stores, into gyms, you know, maybe not, but all of the things that we've associated for, for many decades now, since I was a kid, you know, and I'm 50 years old, and this is the, you know, the, the economy that our parents built for us, for if you're, if you're in that, you know, like we were, you're a young parent or a parent, you're our, the, the baby boomers, Um, And to some degree, the older Generation X uh, people built this economy for us that now has completely fallen, you know, like fallen through into a black hole. It's it may be gone completely because we have to reimagine, we have to re sort of jigger all of the components of going back into these spaces. And it's going to be such a really, it's going to be a really long period of time before we can do that because the the medical experts tell us that there, it's going to be at least 18 months before we have a vaccine. And we have such ignorance in our in our government entities right now that we haven't been able to even figure out how to do the initial testing, let alone the antibody testing that will allow us to go, um, you know, put some people back, uh, back to work. So we have a long haul. But at the end of the day, as I said before, and I'll end here, um, there, there has to be a way, a silver lining somewhere. And if physical health, preventative quality of life health comes out as, as a, you know, as a beacon 
for the way that we live our lives after this is all said and done, then that's something. And that's, that will be something for us to be proud of, for the leaders that end up hearkening a new way for us to conduct our lives on a regular basis, a, a, um, an existence where maybe we, we start to enjoy physical activity more. We can be competitive. Listen, I'm a competitive person. I love racing. Um, I don't do a lot of it, but I, I am definitely competitive. We can play more tennis. We can, you know, get out there and, um, and throw the Frisbee around with our kids more and, um, you know, uh, go for more hikes together as groups and do things that are um, enjoyable that don't involve, um, you know, kind of the, the retail consumption life that we've been hooked on for, for some time now. Um, that's my hope. That is the beacon that I'm looking to. And uh, hopefully you uh, will take this um, take this, this, the wisdom, hopefully it's some, you view it as wisdom and, and take the wisdom and apply it to, to the struggles that we're having right now. Because listen, I think we're all, some of, of my days are pretty decent. Um, a lot of the days I experience right now are, are, you know, at the end of it, I'm just like thinking to myself, I made it through the day. Um, you know, I didn't yell at someone. I didn't, um, you know, feel badly about myself, feel, um, um, you know, really, really depressed. And, and that is so normal. And you should feel normal as we, we go through this. But there is, there should be time for dreaming and hoping and, and then designing the, the future that we want to see at the, um, at the end of the day. So enjoy uh, what you can. Try to stay safe. Try to stay sane and healthy. And I will be back again soon with another new episode of the In Shape Fitness Show. And if you have questions uh, or, or thoughts about the other, um, the other podcasts, if you're interested, just check out bodybyinshape.com. That is where all of the, um, the episodes are posted. And uh, contact information for me and my team was there as well.